Hello everyone. This is a short video uh, about the base body uh, where I want to uh, show a small design change that I've made. And uh, as you can see, uh, this uh, module has a 16 pin power connector. And, and the reason for that is that it's powered by plus 5 volt, uh, plus 12 volt, and minus 12 volt. And uh, when I decided to uh, to design it like that. I thought it was a great idea because I wanted to separate the 5 volt uh, with the microprocessor and the logic and everything from, from the 12 volt which uh, uh, carries or is used for the analog part. So I, it kind of made sense to, uh, to separate them. But it turned out that it was actually quite a bad idea because uh, um, the digital to analog converter that I use in, in this design um, doesn't have an internal voltage reference and um, without going into too much detail what that basically means is that if you move this module around between cases where the 5 volt is uh, sort of changing a little bit uh, the 1 volt per octave uh, calibration will not work or it will sort of go out of tune. And uh, for people that are that only have one case, uh, that might not be a big issue. But but for me, I move around the modules quite a lot between uh, um, different cases. And my big case actually has a separate five volt regulator for each three U row. So, so for me, this is uh, definitely not a good solution. So, um, my plan is to solve it like this. So, uh, here we have the, the PCB and a 16-pin connector. And if we connect it like it's placed like this with a pin 1 here at the, at the red stripe. And... Uh, if I instead want to use only 12 volt and minus 12 volt, then I will use a connector like this, the 10, 10 pin connector. Um, and to be a little bit clever, I thought that uh, why not place the voltage regulator here at this position? Because the problem is if you connect if you by mistake use this one and have the voltage regulator at the same time then you will actually the, the 5 volt will sort of interfere with the output from the 5 volt of, of the regulator and uh, the uh, the result may be uh, not dangerous but uh, not what you expect i guess and it will definitely not be a, a good 5 volt for for the voltage reference so um so I thought it was clever to to make it impossible to mount this at the same time as as the voltage regulator.
Okay, so I uh, will make a very quick walkthrough of the software. Uh, and uh, if we start with um, the main loop uh, down here, if you are not familiar with the Arduino framework, uh, basically you have two functions that you are, one is to call setup, that is the one that is run once when the microprocessor starts, where you set up everything of course and then you have this function that is called loop that is called uh, once but it never exits from from this so it's sort of a super loop where you uh, where you spin around uh, as long as you have power on, on the microcontroller all right so uh, what I wanted to show was this part here uh, which is the handling of the reset input and the clock input and, and this is basically how the sequencer is driven uh, by, by sensing uh, detecting rising edges and falling edges of, of a reset and clock inputs and uh, doing things so at the rising edge we are setting the DAC the accent the VCF and the gate output at the falling edge of um, of the clock we are setting slide and we are advancing the pattern step so, uh, so yeah, th this is basically the the heart of the of the sequencer here, right here. All right, then we have the man machine interface where we read uh, encoder switches and uh, buttons, and we navigate the men menu system. And the, the this function here is a big state machine basically. So we are taking the 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 actual menu. Uh, the menu mode that we are in at the moment and then we sort of depending on which button we press or which parameter we are changing then we move around in the in the menu system the actual implementation of each menu it's is done by uh, by local functions down here so uh, here we have the pattern run view for example and uh, and yeah if we edit a step parameter then <clears throat> we're down here so uh, there's a lot of code uh, for for each menu so if you want to add your own menus then you will I will show you very quickly here then you will need to add here in this uh, enum then you will need to add uh, uh, add one entry here for uh, and then you will have to put code in the this function navigate menu system mm, enable the navigation so it's possi possible to reach the, the menu that you have added and also of course exit from it and uh, finally you have to write some implementation code down here but you can look at the, the if you want to add something and you see that there is a similar thing that I have done already then have a look in the code and uh, see if you can figure out how it works one more thing that I want to address is the limitations of the Arduino and um, if we compile this we use 74% uh, of, of the flash memory or the program store memory so th there is yeah. some space left to do something here and uh, and there are also notes here about the global variables that we are using 40% uh, and and this looks uh, wow this is great we can do a lot of stuff here because we have a lot of um, <laughs> memory but that is actually not the case uh, the OLED uh, takes 1000 of that and then we have all the other local variables that are used in the code so there is actually basically no RAM left in order to be able to add more things and do stuff then you need to strings like this they, they consume both flash and uh, ram so uh, and that is of course a waste and the way to do that is to put strings in in flash memory uh, with this program uh, so that is something that that is work in progress to be able to add things I need to rework the, the software a little bit things that I want to add uh, and I think is quite useful is the copy pattern um, menu that is something that I will feature that I will add 
And I'm also thinking about uh, adding a random pattern. And I'm also thinking about the song mode, but uh, the problem here is uh, free RAM. I have uploaded the new Gerber files below material and schematic diagrams to my GitHub. I will provide a link in the description as usual. If you have an idea of a feature that you think would be useful, please add a comment below and I will have a look at it. As you can see the software has quite limited resources, so it's not possible to do everything. But at some point I might upgrade the design or start a new sequencer project uh, and that will open up new possibilities. Until then, thank you for watching, stay safe and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.